Hey everybody, we're back with another video about code smells. If you haven't seen the other two videos, code smells are essentially the things in your code, more stylistic things that make your code harder to read, harder to understand, harder to maintain, and more likely to make your friends angry. That is assuming you have friends and that you have other people look at your code, which most people, if you write code long enough, you tend to not work on every project alone, you tend to work with other people. So anyway, let's make code that smells better. So my last two videos dealt with magic numbers and repeated code. Today, I wanna to talk about naming. So programmers have to name a lot of different things, functions, variables, classes, constants, and we don't always do a really great job at it. And when we don't, it can often make our code a little hard to follow, a little hard to read, and it can make a mess for ourselves and for others. When I'm looking through code, especially student code, when people are beginning to program, their variable names and their function names, the names that they assign to parts of their programs vary from really helpful, really useful, to really crazy verbose, and sometimes really lazy, and sometimes it's even comical. So sometimes students are trying to be really funny and yeah. So if you're writing a silly piece of example code, then maybe this doesn't matter so much. You can call your names whatever you want, depending on the tolerance of your audience. But if this is code that other people are going to read and other people are actually going to have to use and modify and maintain, then you want to think about your naming. You want to do a good job. So here are a few things to think about. In general, I want you to think about three things when choosing your names. I want you to think about one, making your names understandable. Second, making naming, your naming consistent. And third, in order of importance, third is keeping your name short. An understandable name tells you what the thing is and how it's used. Meaningless names like foo, h, c, these just aren't very helpful. These names don't help anyone reading the code understand what the code's supposed to do. Worse are names that sound helpful but have the wrong meaning. Why would anyone do that? Why would you give a misleading name? This actually happens all the time with students who initially start writing code and they have a variable that works, that they're using a certain way. Down the road, they decide to change that variable. They change how they use it and how it's operating, how, the, how it's functioning inside their code, but they don't bother to change the name. And so if you, if you don't do that, you can cause confusion down the road. So ask yourself, what does this function do? And the name of the function should be pretty similar to what the function does, right? The name should reflect what it does. If you're having a hard time articulating what the function does, you're probably trying to make that function do too much. That'll be a topic for another day. But yeah, simple names that describe what the thing does are the best names. So if I see a function that's named is odd, my guess is that this function is going to take a numerical value, it's going to figure out if that value is odd, and it's going to return a Boolean. That's what the name indicates to me. Now, it's also important to consider what you do when you have names that have multiple words. You usually have, there are three main options you see people use. You see snake case, you'll see camel case, and then you'll see screaming snake case. Each of these different conventions has different advantages and disadvantages. People will fight over them. I don't want to get into that. They tend to all be fairly easy to read and easy to follow. It helps you see that there are multiple words here and just makes it easier as you're scanning through the code to figure out what those words are. So it doesn't matter, in, in my opinion, it doesn't matter as much which of these conventions you use. It matters a bit more that you use them consistently. So that comes to our second point, which is consistent naming. Being consistent just means that you use naming in the same way throughout all your code. Now, if you work for a company, the company may have rules. They may have decided this is how, this is our style guide. This is how we do things. We name identifiers a particular way. In your individual code, you have more flexibility and you will get to define it. For example, you might want to use camel case for all class definitions. Snake case for all local variables and instance methods within classes. Screaming snake case is usually limited to to constants, to thing, variables that are final or const that are never going to be changed. But that's just one way to indicate to the reader, hey, this is a constant. This thing isn't going to change. In, in some languages, like Ruby, it's common to stick a dollar sign at the beginning of global variables. That way you can tell, hey, this thing is global, so use with caution. As long as you're using a consistent coding style and naming things in a consistent way, then your reader, once they get used to that style, is going to have an easier time figuring out what your code does and following it, and they're going to like you a lot more. So, so we've covered two. We've talked about understandable names, and we've talked about consistent names. Finally, once you have understandable names and consistent names, let's try to make our name short. I hope the reasons are fairly obvious for this. All things being equal, a short name is easier to type, 
You're gonna wear out your fingers and it's gonna be quicker for people to read. There's really no advantage to unnecessarily long names. Really long names just tire out fingers. So there you have it, three guidelines for better naming. It may seem simple, it may seem obvious, but until naming problems aren't also super common, bad naming is going to stay on our list of problematic code smells. So I hope this helps you write better code, and I'll see you next time. So what do you think? I hope that was useful. If you're enjoying these videos, if you find them useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post regularly. I try to post at least one a week. If there are more things you'd like to see that I haven't posted, more how-tos, more technical questions, please leave comments and questions. Please send me email, uh, however you want to get a hold of me. Just let me know what you'd like me to make, and as I have time, I'll, I'll see what I can do.